Okay. <laughs> Let's do um, this last problem. I think I only have enough battery life for one more anyway. So, and um, I'll post all the videos right after this. So um, it's this one here. So um, tertiary alcohol. Yeah. So we're gonna make a tertiary alcohol, as you can see. from an ester. So this is the same mechanism as making a tertiary alcohol from an acid chloride. Esters and acid chlorides are effectively the same thing. Don't worry about it. Is it bleaking? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so acid, esters and acid chlorides are um, effectively the same thing. Um, but acid chlorides are more reactive. Okay, same thing as in if you want to use them as a starting material to make something else, okay? But acid chlorides are more reactive, so they tend to be used more, you know, but esters are easier to get, so you don't have to make the acid chloride from the carboxylic acid. So anyways, so the first step, of course, is like, And ME, that just stood for methyl, CH3. Um, so we've got the ET, MGBR. Okay. So remember, this is essentially carbon ion, right? So it's going to attack that carbonyl carbon. So it's going from sp2 to sp3 intermediate. The intermediate, of course, is going to be uh, have stereochemistry, but it's going to break back down, so we don't have to worry about it. So that's the newly added ethyl group there. Like that. Okay? So this is your intermediate, same intermediate that you keep seeing. What's going to happen now though is you've got this good leading group. Okay, so this is going to break back down and knock that out. So in fact what you get is an intermediate from this is a ketone, just like in the acid chloride mechanism. Like that. Okay, so that's your ketone. And you're gonna have, of course. The methoxide, but the MGBR is going to be associated with that. Okay. But remember, we have excess of this stuff. Okay, so what's going to happen now is you're going to have another one. Ketone is um, less reactive, but still reactive enough to have a Grignard reagent react with it. So that would be. And when that happens, you get that. Like that. So uh, again, green your reagents, uh, you want to make sure everything's got negative charges, no positive charges when you're dealing with a Grignard solution because um, it makes the solution very basic, okay? We've talked about that before. Like, acidic solutions always positive and neutral, basic solutions always negative and neutral, okay? So no positive charges until right now, right? In the second step, um, well, in the second step, you just add water, okay? So, in fact, there's not even gonna be a positive charge then. So, you could add acid to it, I guess, but there's no use. Like that. And that's going to give you your product. Hydroxide. 
Yeah, the hydroxide ion. And that just washes away. MGBR? Yeah, that's already washed away. Oh, it's already washed away. Yeah, because you're putting a bunch of water in there. But if you want to, you can balance your charges. That, yeah, because that... If, if people, you like trying to, to do that yeah. to keep things straight. No, yeah, it's good to take account of everything, you know. And, and and you're right, in organic chemistry, you know, organic chemists usually kind of just discount that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because of the way, you know, we think. We think about the reaction happening. We're like, oh, that thing's already gone because we washed it out. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. So, but yeah, it's good to kind of keep track of every atom, especially when you're in the in your situation where you're like, um, I'm not sure if I've actually broken this bond and what piece came off and things like that. So if you have trouble doing that, which most introductory organic students do, you know, just keep account of everything. You know, don't like kind of brush over steps like I do. You know what I'm saying? We cool?